I decree direction. I decree peace. 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 I decree every way anyone here might have inherited from our father, might have inherited from your mother, every weight that you have put upon yourself, every weight of iniquity, every weight of sin, every weight of every wrong habit. I decree and I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ, the living God. I decree it dissolve in the name of Jesus. I decree it dissolve in the name of Jesus. I decree it dissolve in the name of Jesus. I decree peace into every soul. I decree peace into every soul. The Bible says, as soon as the year of me, strangers shall obey me and strangers shall run out of their hidden places. Daddy, I decree and I prophesy, let every stranger in the soul of your brethren, every stranger, I decree they are deleted in the name of Jesus. I decree they are deleted in the name of Jesus. Father, let your name alone be exalted, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 in Jesus' name. I want to say welcome again. Um, for a couple of weeks now, we started the topic, how to sustain your identity through prayer. Then we last week, we finish up on that, on how to sustain our identity through prayer. And now we're moving on to how to sustain our identity through faith. Um, firstly, can anyone, you know, define what do you think faith is? You know, just to make it more interactive. Can anyone define for us what you think faith is to you? You know. And if you want to back it up with the Bible scripture, that's fine. You can go ahead. Anyone, anyone, what do you think faith is? What's your definition of faith? Anyone can go ahead. Um, I'm just going to back it up with uh, a verse we all know. So... Hebrews 11, 1 in the NLT version it says, for faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. So, yeah. Yeah, okay, what's your definition of that? The reality of what we hope for. <laughs> <laughs> the reality of what we hope for, right? All yeah. right, any other person? If any other person want to read in another translation, you can go ahead. But some other translation does justice to it in a more simpler way. Another person. Um, if you have, go ahead. Yeah, for me, I'll just go with um, faith is what you need to please God because the word of the Lord said, for without faith, we can't please God. So faith is all that we need as Christians to please God. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Any other person? Any other person? If you have, if you have the Bible app on your phone, if you check, I have there's this translation called God's Word. He has a very interesting definition of that Hebrew 11 one. You know, um, there's another one called Easy English Bible. You know, I don't want to do because I'm just going to do most of the talking tonight. So that's why I'm giving room. Or if you want to read Amplified Bible, you know, so we can have, I just want to make it more interactive. Then we can have a broader knowledge to what we're talking about, you know, so that by the time I begin to teach, we all can be on the same page. I think Danny is trying to say something. Anyone? Anyone? All right. I'll read God's word. Hebrew 11, 1. It says, faith assures of, it assures us of things 
we expect and convinces us of the existence of things we cannot see. You have a strong conviction. Uh, welcome on board, Mr. Elisha. You have a strong conviction of the things you cannot see. A strong conviction. He also, the beginning says, this is God's word translation. We're reading from the book of Hebrew, chapter 11, verse one. He says, faith assures. Assures means you have a guarantee. It gives confidence. Assures of things we expect and convinces us of the existence of things we cannot see. Let's see another translation. It says, uh, the easy English, it says, this is what it means to trust God. We will be sure about the things, the things that we hope for. We will be sure in our minds about the things we cannot even see. We will be sure about the things we cannot even see. We will be sure. Though you cannot see, but there is this strong conviction in your heart that this thing is real. Just like now, like I always tell my wife, when me and my wife, you know, when I encourage her, probably I want her to pursue something. I want her to increase her strength in doing something. I'll tell my wife, I said, do you know that everyone you see today, everybody believed they will see tomorrow, even though we have not seen tomorrow yet. Like every one of us now, all of us here, we are all Christians, and we believe you want to be in church tomorrow. And you believe you will definitely be in church. Even some of us already have what we're going to wear tomorrow. And tomorrow is not even here yet. But you so much have that confidence that nothing can stop you from going to church tomorrow. And we are, and we are still, today is the 17th. Why tomorrow is the 18th of September? That is exactly what faith is a confident assurance that you believe what you have not even seen. And as I'm talking right now, I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit telling me that there's someone here, right? What I'm saying now is the solution to what you are looking for. I don't know what you are trusting God for. I don't know how many times you have failed. I don't know who have not believed in you. I don't know who have disappointed you. I don't know who have discouraged you, but I can guarantee you one thing. If you have seen it, you can take it. If you have seen, see, everything that is obtainable must be seen first from the mind. It, it must be obtained first from the mind. Okay. If you can see okay. it, if you can see it, you can obtain it. If you can see it, you can obtain it. If you can see it, you can seize it. I'm going to repeat that again. If you can see it from the scripture, you can seize. You can seize it. All you need to do is to see it. That is why Napoleon Hill says, whatever the mind can conceive, the mind can achieve. Whatever that crosses your mind, I bet you it can become an achievement. So I don't know what will be the struggle. I don't know who doesn't believe in you. But if you can believe in yourself, if you can believe in that vision, if you can believe in that dream, it is achievable. If you can see it, I'm saying it again, don't pick your vision from other people's vision. We can be encouraged from other person's vision. Let's say Sister Rebecca now, you know, uh, she introduced me, or let's say she was encouraging me. Oh, bro, Taiwo, oh, there's this program I'm doing, you know, is generating a lot of income to me. I can pick strength. I can pick inspiration from what she's telling me. But your vision must be backed up by the confidence of the Holy Spirit. We must always go back to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit because it might be two different journey. So it's very important to see it from within and most importantly, to see it from the scripture. 
Because once you can see it, nothing can stop you. Even though I must also establish that every vision can only be actualized through dedication and commitment. Through dedication and commitment. So for us to sustain our identity as Christians, we must be ready. We must be willing to be committed to it. Willing and committed, dedicated, regardless of the temptation that comes our way. So I'm going to quickly leave the room again for one more person. Um, do we have anyone who wants to define for us again what is our topic tonight is how to sustain our identity through faith. How to sustain our identity through faith. How to sustain our identity through faith. Anyone, if you have any scripture in your spirit, please go ahead. Anyone. Majority of us are Bible students. Please, please, let's, let's challenge each other, you know. Anyone? Anyone? Looks like no one is no one is saying anything. You gotta you gotta start us off and then we go from the come on, come on. We, with, with everything I just said now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, once I start, it's going to be very hard for me to stop. You know that. So that's why I'm trying to really give room, you know, for us to discuss because I have a couple of Bible scriptures that we really need to dig into. And believe me, it's going to be very interesting tonight because the thing God showed me from that scripture was very deep, you know. I and guess. That's, go ahead. Okay. So let's see what I can add. Um, I would say that. Hold on, let me. Um, I would say faith is like uh, I don't want to use the word like requirement, but I would say necessity rather as a believer because it is what is going to help you grow. Um, one of the things that I have written um on my wall here is that um, uh waiting enduring helps form your faith you talked about the process last night in vigil how like it helps you in um becoming like who god has you to be and if you don't wait if your endurance is not tested your faith won't grow you feel what i'm trying to say so it is um a necessity as a believer in order for you to actually grow you know so Thank you. Thank you. And, um, oh, I did. <laughs> go ahead. Go I, had ahead. A, I had a Bible verse. Okay. Um, James 1, verse 3, it says, For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. That is the NLT version. So, you know, when mm -hmm. basically that just ties in what I said. Let me not even deep it. But yeah, that ties in what mm -hmm. I said. It, it produces growth, endurance to keep going because if you don't have something to look forward to you just remain where you are you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying but faith helps you to be like i can become that i have somewhere to go there's an assignment to do you know it just helps you to look far it helps you to mm -hmm. to, to see beyond wow yeah wow thank you very much welcome bro josh um Believe me, you have you have you have triggered another topic within what you just said now, and and I like that, which is faith will be tested. Faith will be tested, and you know that's another thing people don't realize that because I have a vision, people don't know that these things will be tested. Faith will be tested, like it will. You will go just like someone, like I always say, you want to become a medical doctor, you want to become, you know, whatever we have desired to become. You believe first, it all starts with faith, but that faith will be, it will be tested. But let's now establish how 
do we obtain? You know, Sister Rebecca mentioned something from my definition of faith. She said, it's something you look forward to. We, it, because it's that faith that strengthens, is what waters your endurance. So it, it, it's something you look forward to, you believe it, you can become. It is it's the motion, it is, it, it is the, the manure that keeps you going. Even when in the face of all odds, it keeps you going that no, there is, there is going to be a light at the end of this tunnel. But how do we obtain this faith? How do we obtain this faith? Because brethren, I want you to understand, no matter how rosy, no matter how good things may look, we all, we all, we always have terrible moments. When I mean terrible, I'm trying to use the word times of challenges. That is the way God designed life because our times of challenges has been designed to help us recharge. It helps you to, you know, to, to rethink, to reevaluate, to, you know, to look from within that there is deep, there is more on the inside. If those challenges doesn't come, we can't think deeper. We can't go extra mile. We can't we can see farther than what we can see. So it's always very important to be well prepared. So now let's look at the Bible, the scripture from Romans chapter 10. Um, Sister Rebecca, you can always read Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17. 17. Yes, please. All right. Um, let me know if you want me to read another uh, transition. No, NLT is fine. Go ahead. Uh, so faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. That's NLT? Yeah. Okay. Um, the King James Version I have here says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith, it comment. Look at that emphasis. The place emphasis twice on the word hearing, meaning faith stops the moment you stop hearing. The moment you stop hearing, your faith begins to dwindle. Your faith begins to go down. For faith to increase this, the person who needs the faith must continue to listen. He must, you must continue to hear, either by tape or by study. It is, it is just like Sister Rebecca said, it is a necessity. Go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. So real quick, I don't need to like dive into something else, but um, I think I've, I've discussed this um, verse with you before. Like it says, faith comes by hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. And you just said like, um, like, uh, well, you basically just emphasize, uh, emphasize this verse, but another point I'm gonna draw, you can elaborate or not, or like if you disagree, um, is that whatever we choose to listen to is where our faith will be put in. You know what I'm saying? So like, even if it's like, not necessarily the word of God, if it's like, I don't know, people, like you just constantly are just listening to people like talk some type of way. Over time, your faith will be put in that person or whatever it is. So we have to ensure that we're always constantly digesting the word so our faith will be built on Christ and not on any other thing. So I just wanna emphasize. Mm. Amen, you are absolutely right. Because you know, who you listen to or who you behold, you become. I'm going to say that again. Who you listen to frequently, in, in, in just in a short time. Look at what the Bible says. The moment they saw the disciples in Antioch, they said, these people, they have walked with Christ. They have spent some, look at, okay, let me deviate a little bit. When Moses came down, spending 40 days on the mountain. When it came down, what happened to him? The glory 
because it was, it was in the presence of God. Everything, the glory, because no man can see God. So what we see is glory. So the glory was irradiated on Moses to the point no man, the same way no man can look at God, no man could look into the face of Moses. Because who he behold, he has become. So it's very essential, very, very, and that is why the Bible is established, and thank you for saying that. And that takes us back to what we just read now. Faith comes because just like you said, there are different sources of faith. But if you're going to get the Bible kind of faith, it must come from the word of God. If we will get the Bible kind of faith, a faith that, that dares anything, this faith can only be obtained from the word of God. However, like I said, Sister Rebecca said something that I said, she triggered me. And she said, your faith will be tested. And another word I want us to see, let me quickly recap all this definition. You know, I, I'm going to provide a recording for anyone. You can send me your email. So I give you the recording. It says, every believer must understand that only changed people can initiate change in their world. Only change. If you are not a change agent, you can't initiate change. It will be difficult. You won't be able to. Only change people, meaning that for me and you to become a person, and it comes through faith. To become a change person, it comes through faith. Two, only charge, charged people can charge others. If your spirit is not charged, you can't charge others. And what charges our spirit is faith. If your spirit, because the, 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 the life wire, what makes faith, faith is the word. You can see someone who's not a Christian who demonstrate faith and they feel like they have faith because they are, you know, have you, have you met some people who are naturally confident, naturally bold, but I can bet you when some situations happen in their life and because they don't have God, that situation will break them. It will melt them. And that is why it's very important to do what? To know that only charge. That is why, you know, when you are fired up in this world, you are completely charged. Let's look at 1 Timothy 6 12. First, the book of 1 Timothy 6 12. To establish that faith is a fight. 1 Timothy 6 12. 1 Timothy 6, 12. I read, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Brethren, this journey, this salvation, this faith that we profess, it is a fight. Because for you to lay hold on anything, it must be a fight. To obtain any God's promises, it must be with a fight. Look at our Lord Jesus. Despite it was God in the spirit and in the flesh, the Bible says he had to go on 40 days. He was led by the Spirit to be equipped to fulfill the assignment that has been put on his shoulder. Faith is a fight. So I'm saying this, I, you know, I'm trying, I don't want to rush it. I know many of us have dreams. We have goals. Many things want to achieve. But I want you to know that your level of dreams will determine your level of faith. Your level of dreams, your ambition will determine your level of fight. I'm going to repeat that again. Your level of dream 
and your level of ambition, your level of vision will determine your level of faith and your level of fight. Let me give you a scenario. A mother carries a baby for nine months. A mother carries a baby. It's a fight of nine months. That baby can never, the mother has to sustain that pregnancy for nine months or else it will be called a premature. So if your ambition is as big as a trailer, as a plane, believe me, it will take a huge fight. Like I said in a, in, in a video last night, don't have a big dream and you are giving, you are giving a small fight to achieve it. It's not done. It can't be done. You can't sustain. It's, okay, look at, okay, let me come back to the topic now. How to sustain your identity as a Christian. How do you sustain your identity as a believer? And you don't know the word of God. You don't study the word of God. How do you, how would you, how would you sustain it? Because wherever you are, you'll be tested. You can't imagine people, my colleagues, you know, who are not Christians, people have tried, yeah, people have done, people have tried things to trigger my old self. Please, if you hear any noise in my background, please let me know, please. You know, people have tried to trigger my old self. And Holy Spirit will say, just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. Because it is through this word that the Holy Spirit uses to sustain your faith. Through this word. So how do we sustain this Christianity? How do we sustain the vision God has committed to your hand? How do we sustain our family? How do we sustain this, this salvation that has been... Do you know that many are to die for us to have this salvation? It's not just Jesus that died. There's a book I'm looking for called The Book of the Matthias. You can't imagine how many people that were being murdered, as in killed for, believe me, even after the times of the Bible, there were many people who were killed, killed, killed for this Bible to come into existence, to get to this site that we can have it today. So the question we are asking tonight is, if these people never fought if they never laid their life down for this salvation, how, 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 how would we have been able to obtain all the resources we have today? Because a time is coming. You know, I said something yesterday. I was telling my wife when I came back this morning, she was asking, oh, how was the night vigil? I said, believe me, there were a couple of things I said at the vigil that driving home, I knew that I didn't see those things from what I was, from what I wrote down. It just came out. And the Holy Spirit was ministering to me on the same words. And what were those things? Our life, our life is attached to seasons. Our lives, our destiny is attached to seasons. So if we don't obtain faith, at the early season of our lives. Because those faith is to achieve, to legislate the will of God, to obtain the promises, to lay hold on eternal life. If we don't, and we not begin to chase those things at, at old age, I won't lie to you, God won't be able to answer those prayer anymore. You know why? Because as at that time, it's already late. Late in the sense that God won't be able to do much. Much won't be committed anymore. Because everything God does is attached to time and season. I'm saying this again. Your life has a season. The plan of God for your life has a season. So it's very important to spend quality time with God. To know, God, what are you saying this season? 
What am I supposed to do with my life this season? What is your plan and purpose for my life this season? What is the price I need to pay now this season? One of the points I have here, it says, we must understand that for our faith to bear fruit, it must be rooted in God's word. For any faith to bear fruit, it must be rooted in God's word. It, can, it cannot bear fruit if it's not rooted in God's word. If that faith doesn't have root, it can't bear fruit. I'm telling you the truth. If that faith does not have root, it won't be able to bear fruit. We must also understand that faith can change, is meant to change us from the level of no result to the level of maximum results. Faith to sustain our identity. We must understand that for you to see to sustain that life that God has given to you, you must understand that you need faith to move from the life of failure, the life of no results, to the life of maximum results. So if anyone is here now, they have been struggles, you observe, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to obtain something, you want to achieve anything, and you observe, you struggle, like you give up easily. You give up easily. That means, you need to move from that level of no result to a, your faith need to increase. Either the faith needs to be activated or you don't have enough. You need to replenish. Load the word with the word of God. Load your heart more with the word of God to obtain a strong, a strong lasting faith. Let's quickly look at the book of Luke. Luke chapter 18. From verse 1 to 8. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18 from verse 1 to 8. I read. And he spake a parable unto them. To this end. That men ought always to pray. And not to faint, saying, there was, there was in a city a judge, a judge, Hold on, thank you, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man, and there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by a continual coming, she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear, yeah. who said it? And the Lord, the Lord. You see, like I was sharing at the, at, at the night vigil, anything, anytime you hear a parable from Jesus and you hear, and the Lord said, or that parable was being spoken by Jesus, please, I'm begging, I'm sharing some of my secrets with you. Anytime you see those things, they are exposing you to secrets. The Bible is revealing secrets that you must hold, hold it as treasure. Those are secrets. He said, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him. Though he be along with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find, what does that mean? Even God, God, Jesus speaking this parable, is making us to understand that faith is connected to prayer. 
So God showed you a vision five years ago, three years ago, that is good. And you saw it in your dream. Or he planted that vision in your heart. And you have the confirmation from God. Believe me, my sister, my brother, keep praying. He said there was a widow. Even the judge does not fear God. This, this, was, this was Jesus showing us this secret. That one of the secret ways to obtain anything from God is to be rugged in persistence. Persistence asking, you can weary God. <laughs> The Bible says the children of Israelites, they kept asking God for a king. And God gave them King Saul. When they began to sin again, when they sinned against God, God told Samuel, he said, I, will, I used to be their king. It was because they persuaded God. Brethren, if God has said it, you can have it, but you must know that you have to be persistent in the place of prayer. And that is why Jesus is saying that this woman, he wearied the, he wearied the judge. He wearied the church because she kept coming over and over. Lord, you have said it. Lord, you have said it. Where is my portion? Lord, you have said this. Your word says I shall be fruitful. Your word says no tree, you know, every tree planted by the rivers of water. You keep, you go by his word. You take his word back to him. God, you said it. Don't stop asking until you see it. And that is why Jesus is now telling us, when I come back, will I find, ah, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know what Holy Spirit just told me now? God is looking for people, oh, let me rephrase it. In your test of faith, like Sister Rebecca said, Jesus is telling us in, that, in, in this verse that your faith will be tested, but how long can you wait? How long can you wait? For how long can you be persistent? And that was why I said, what I said at, at the night vision yesterday, everything is not depression. I understand as human, definitely, you try something once, two times, you know, the third time, the fourth time, you keep failing, you feel depressed, you, look, you almost look at yourself like a failure, but you must understand that you have to do evaluation. Where am I missing it? Where did I? You see, one thing I always tell my wife, I don't like to put, I don't know why, maybe because of the way Holy Spirit trained me or I think my upbringing also contributed to it because I don't like to beg. I don't like to ask people for money. So I always hold myself accountable. Everything I do, me first, I, before I even talk of, oh, maybe it's spiritual. I make it physical force. Where have I gone wrong? Where have I missed it? Where did I fail? How did I spend my time? How did I study? Do you know that even in study, study has to be strategic. If you don't have the wisdom on how to study strategically, you can think you are a failure and you are not. It's because you have not been guided. And God is saying, how long can you wait? He said, even the unjust, this man, he doesn't fear God, but still, the man bowed. He bowed to the, to, the, to the persistency of that woman. That's why you hear people say, persistency will break any resistance. No matter how resistant, no matter how strong you are, persistence will break through any form of resistance. But for how long? And that is why we need the staying power, the staying power, the staying power to stay. Habakkuk chapter 2 says, he said, and I will wait and stay to hear what he will say unto me. How long it will be on that mountain to wait? We don't know. Look at Moses. Moses will be on the mountain the first day, the second day, the third day, and he, until the seventh day, God will not come down. Brethren, what is that thing you are trusting God for? Have you given up on it? Have you, have, you, have you crossed it out from your checklist? How long can you wait? 
Is there any courses you are taking right now and you feel like you are failing or you, or you are already scared that you won't pass that class? Please, re-strategize. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. But hold yourself accountable. Hold yourself responsible first. Because, you know, Bible says, he has given us everything unto life and to godliness. You can... You cannot be, see, when we're coming from practice this afternoon, I told my wife, I said, I cannot have the Holy Spirit and still become small. I refuse to be. How can I carry God inside of me and I'm still small and I'm still a failure? It can't be possible. It shouldn't be possible. It should never happen. How can people who are Buddhist, people who doesn't serve God, people who doesn't go to church, people who doesn't, who doesn't pay tight, are doing better? I'm bringing a challenge to everybody here tonight. If people who doesn't serve God, you see, and the issue is these people understand principle, principle, principle. And what is that principle? Principle of strategic planning, principle of dedication, Principle of commitment. As Christians, we make everything look grace, grace, grace. Grace means take responsibility for your life. Take responsibility. Responsibility. My previous job where I used to work, I was very close to a couple of directors over there. There was this woman. That woman should be like 65 or so, or maybe early 60s. This woman manages three departments. She manages QC. She manages the lab. She manages QA. She manages quality and control. Guess what? All our kids are all grown-ups. I think our first child is already married. And the other one is this woman, because of the level of responsibility on her plate, this woman resumes eight. She doesn't leave work until nine. And she comes to work Saturday and Sunday. Brethren, please see this success is not for lazy people. Success, faith, Christianity is not for lazy people. Please, please don't mind my tone. I'm just passionate about this topic. Christianity is not for lazy. You cannot be an effective believer. You cannot sustain this. Think about this. What will your children read about your salvation in the future. Look at me now for an example. If my mom passed away tomorrow now, I can, I can gladly, gladly, with all joy on my face, say to my children that faith, Josiah, grandma paid the price for every one of us. Grandma, our, my mother prayed at least four hours almost every day since 1996. Since 1996, there was a day, I think it was before pandemic, my mom prayed for almost 14 hours that day. She was just crying. From the moment she woke up, she, she was just crying, crying and praying. Crying. She couldn't shower until like almost nine. What am I trying to say is, what, 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 what would your children, what would your generation say about you 100 years from now? What would they say? What would they say that you did that rescued their generation, that sustained their generation, that sustained this family? My God, look at what happened to the children of Israelites. People of covenant, the moment, the moment Joseph died, the moment Joseph died, the Bible says another king arose. Another king arose. And because Joseph was no longer in the palace. What happened? Things changed. You know what that means? When me and you pass away, when we die, when we get to old age, it is what it is the sacrifices you have laid down, the people you have raised that will sustain what you started. Unfortunately, Joseph did not pass the quality the values of the salvation of everything and that he used to sustain himself, he didn't pass it to the children of Israelites. Look at how the, the enemy, the, you see, one, there was a day I was meditating on that scripture. 
And this this how the Holy Spirit painted the picture. The Holy Spirit said, do you know that back then in Egypt, the, the Egyptians were sleeping with their children. They were sleeping with their wives they, because they have enslaved them. These things couldn't be done in the time of Joseph. But the moment their savior died, another enemy arose. Brethren, every salvation we are enjoying today, it's a reason because it's, it's because of the, the Christian giants that fought, they stood, they carried this Christianity to every part of the world. Today we are still talking about the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We're talking about the God of Joseph. We're talking about the God of this. What if they never paid the price? How many people talk about the God of um, this guy that betrayed Jesus? What's his name again? See, I can't even remember his name. Yes. Is that Judas, right? Yeah. Thank you. Nobody can pray with the name of Judas. But do you know that in the book of Luke, chapter 10, Judas was part of those that, that did miracle. God wrought miracles through the life of Judas. But look at how he ended. Brethren, this journey is a big fight. There's a long reading we need to do tonight and that is where we really need to establish some core things let's open our bible to the book of first samuel 17 first samuel 17 please first samuel 17 from verse 1 to 51 first samuel 17 first samuel 17 first samuel 17 from verse 1 to 51 i read for Samuel 17. Now the Philistines gathered together. Okay, you know what? Let me skip. I'm going to skip it all the way to, I'm going to start from verse 40. From verse 40. For Samuel 17, from verse 40. One second, please. All right. There are some there are some things I don't want to miss. That's why I'm I'm trying to quickly look through it. All right. Let's start from verse twenty. I'm so sorry. From verse twenty. And David rose up early in the morning, and left the ship, with four Samuel seventeen from verse twenty. And David rose up early in the morning and left the ship with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of a keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with then, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were so afraid. And the men, verse 25 now, and the men of Israel said, have you seen this man? that is come up surely to defy Israel. He is come up and it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich, will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, what will be done to the man that killed this Philistine? and take it away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he, that he should defy the armies of the living God? I'm going to pause there. How can, look at this. How can, how can a young boy like this, a, you see, while I was meditating on this scripture from the beginning, it showed that even though David was a young boy, at this level, 
this young boy had so much grown in faith to the point that David faith was looking for opportunity. These guys see opportunity in every challenges. A man of faith sees opportunity when people see difficulty. A man of faith see opportunity for elevation when people see difficulty. A man of faith see an opportunity to become to become another man, to become a better man when people see difficulty. A young boy, I looked at another thing the Holy Spirit told me. He said, how come even King Saul could not even discern that there were people of covenant, even a young boy could pick, he could understand that by the reason of their covenant, Goliath should not have the audacity, should not have the authority to challenge them. Look at verse 26 again. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? We're reading from 1 Samuel 17, from verse, verse, the last line of verse 26. Uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the Lord, the armies of the living God. Verse 27 says, and the people answered him after this manner, saying, so, so shall it be done to the man that killed him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, had when he spake unto men, unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down either? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cost? And he turned from him toward another. Look at that. He turned from his own brother, turned to another, and spake after the same manner, meaning repeating the same thing again. And the people answered him again. After this former manner, verse 31, and when the words were heard, which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul and sent for him. A man of faith is unstoppable. A man of faith is unstoppable. A man of faith, you see, I don't care who doesn't believe in your dream. I don't care who says you cannot become what you have desired to become. Don't even look at it. His own blood, blood brother, his own blood brother could not even believe in him. And this young boy, he looked, he looked at another man and asked the same question. And he asked, what shall be given to this man? What shall be given to the person who killed this man? What do we see? We see a man of persistence, a man, a fearless man. He, could, he didn't even allow the fate of his own blood, his own blood to discourage him. Who has discouraged you? Has your boss on the job discouraged you? Has your family member discouraged you? Has your husband discouraged you? Has, has anyone discouraged you? Can you please rise up in your faith and believe what God has told you? I want you to rise up in your faith and see that there is greatness inside you. This young boy was a boy, but what was inside him was bigger, bigger than even his. And this is their firstborn, the eldest, the eldest. Greatness is not by age. Faith is not by age. Confidence is not by age. Knowing God is not by age. Verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no smart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight this Philistine. <laughs> you know, while I was preparing for this, one question I paused and I began to ask the Holy Spirit. What, God, what are the secrets you reveal to this guy? Where, where did David, where did he get his confidence? This guy is a boy. Where, where did he get his confidence? And Holy Spirit said, he said, this boy you see, he's not just a boy. This boy, he is a, he's a boy of intimacy. 
This boy knows secrets that many people who are older than him doesn't know. This boy knows my secrets. This boy understands covenants. He understands covenants. He understands fellowship. He understands that when God is with you, who can be against you? Oh my God. Verse 33 now. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight him, for thou art but a youth. Another translation says a boy, and he is a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamp out of the flock, and I went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the beard, and smote him, and slew him. David is, is giving his resume. He's, he's having an interview with King Saul, and this guy is reading his resume. He said, I may be a boy, but I am a killer. I might look very small, but this man, you see, I have dealt with people higher than him. He might, he might be tall in height, but the, the, the things I have dealt with in the past, this man cannot withstand them. Virgin, I don't know what you are going through right now. God is preparing you for the crown ahead. He said, and I will look up to the Lord. Psalm 121, verse 1. Say, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and the earth. Brethren, don't look at where you are today. This guy, he was, he was always on the back side. Oh my God. See, it's easy for you to profess you have faith. It's easy to declare you have faith when, when you are in your room. Like now, I'm in my house. I can say to my wife, I can beat that brother. I can beat Goliath. But you see, the hardest faith is to profess faith in the midst of cloud. This guy declared what he believed in the midst of hundreds, hundreds of thousands of soldiers. Hundreds of thousands, you see, and that's why our mentor, Bishop Oedipo, we always say, in the days of tribulation, in the days of battle, only what you have stored in your heart, only what you have stored in your heart will come out. Psalm 119, it says, your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Brethren, that is why the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, and faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comment, faith comment, faith comment, faith comment. This guy has low dead. You see, to know the secret of David, go and read the book of Psalms. This guy is a lover. This guy knew, he knew so deep secret about God. Let's read for that, for you to, for you to know how confident this guy was. Verse 35, and I went, okay, verse 36 now. First Samuel, first Samuel 17, I'm reading verse 36 now. Thy, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. Brethren, what is that thing that is challenging the name of God in your life? What is that thing that is defiling the name? See, we're going to pray at this point. Because God showed me something at this place. Whatsoever as a covenant child, whatsoever, whatsoever has brought sin to your name, whatsoever that is trying to ridicule you, is challenging the covenant of God over your life. I say that again. Whatsoever is trying to ridicule, bring you shame, that thing is trying to, because you are under the covenant of Abraham. 
we are sons and daughters of Abraham. Look at what it says. That verse 36. It says you defy the armies of the living God. I want us to pray that, oh God, every power, every forces, anything, whatsoever, that is trying to defy my destiny, whatsoever that is trying to ridicule my destiny, thou son of David, that did defile them, that did conquer them, that did conquer them, Jesus, arise, oh God, whatsoever that is trying to bring shame to my life, whatsoever that is trying to bring shame into my destiny, whatsoever that is trying to ridicule my life, whatsoever that is trying to keep me small, thou son of David, that did bring them down. Jesus, 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 bring them down. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray that prayer again. That, oh Lord, whatsoever is trying to bring me down, by the reason of covenant, I command them to go down. Whatsoever that wants to bring me down at my age, whatsoever that says I will not become successful, whatsoever that says whatever that happens to my sister must happen to me, whatever that happens to my brother must happen to me, whatsoever that wants to keep me small, I decree today, I command you to go down. I command you to go down. I command you to go down in the name of Jesus. I want you to begin to pray. Begin to decree as a child of God that whatsoever that wants to bring me down, go down, go down, go down in the name of Jesus. The Bible says I shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Whatsoever that wants to bring me down, I command you to go down. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray. That Lord, I activate the covenant of mess over my life. I activate the covenant of mercy. That let your mercy override every judgment. Let your mercy override every judgment. Let your mercy override my errors, oh God. Let your mercy override every wrong decision I have made. Let your mercy override, oh God. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, we make a demand. Let your mercy override. Let your mercy prevail over every judgment. Let your mercy prevail over every judgment. Let your mercy prevail. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. One more, I want us to pray that, oh God, let my true identity, let the lion in me arise. Let the lion in me roar. Let the lion in me come alive. Let the lion in me come alive. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you, Lord. Let the lion in me, oh God. Let the lion in me, oh God. Arise, oh God. Etemba, Baba, Ezika. Zeteko, Balia, Selekoba. Zateko, Abande, Ezira. Zabalia, Zeteko, Balia, Zabala, Ezamba, Letekoba. Zeteko, Balia, Zeteko, Bala. Aremba, Zeteko, Balia. Zabala, Zidavia. Zepande, Ezuku, Bala. Zabande e Sampa Yeba, Zeteko Balante e Zuria, Nasamba e Zetekoba, Zeteko Kobala, Daddy ITP, let the lion in me arise and roar, arise and roar, arise and roar, arise and roar, arise and roar. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 37 says, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the pawn of the lion and out of the paw, the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord will be with thee. 
And Saul hammed David with his hammer, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also he hammed him with a coat of mail, and David guarded his sword upon his armor, and he assayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with this, for I have not proved them. And David put them off, put them off him, verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. If you read another translation, the verse 40 I just read now, from NLT, he said he took, he took five stones from the stream. And you know what the Holy Spirit told me? He said that stream represents the word of God. He took five scripture to attack Goliath. Brethren, go for the word. Go. Nothing can survive. Anything that confronts you, they cannot, because in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. John chapter 1 verse 1. Nothing, no power of darkness can survive the word. When you release, that's what the Bible says. You start decree a thing and it shall be established. Whatsoever you say. The Bible says in John 1 5. It says there is a light that shineth in darkness. And darkness cannot comprehend it. There is a light. That word is the light of God. The Bible said, the entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance, when the word comes, every darkness must depositate. Every darkness must disappear. And verse 41 says, And the Philistines, verse 40 says, And he took his staff in his hand, chose five stones from the brook, put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had, even in his crib, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistines. Verse 41. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. Look at that, verse 41. The Philistines came, not Goliath. Please, read that verse 41 very well. Not Goliath, the Philistine. Imagine a hundreds of soldiers. I'm sure many of us watch American movies. We are talking about battalion of soldiers drawing towards one man, one man, a boy. Come on, come on. This guy knew something about God. The Bible said this guy was a boy. Well, where did he find his confidence? What did he know? Who gave, even his own blood brother? Who, who, who preached to this guy? Who preached to him? Verse 42. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he, he disdained him for was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. Verse 43. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? that thou comest to me with, sta with sta staves. And the, the Philistine cursed David by his God. Verse 44. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear and with a shield, but I, I come and I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. In this chapter, he has used that word, used the word defiled over and over, over and over. You see, like I always say, these are secrets. This guy is telling us that whosoever Goliath was challenging. They were not just challenging the Israelites. They were challenging the covenant. They were challenging God, not just the Israelites. They were challenging the God of the Lord of hosts. And look at what he said. Verse 46. This day the Lord delivered thee into my hand, and I will smite thee 
and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly. <laughs> oh my God. How come it was only one person who realized there was a God in Israel? Think about that. How come it was only David who realized there is a God in Israel? How come even the king could not realize there was a God in their midst? Brethren, you can carry greatness and not know it. I'm going to say it again. You can carry greatness and not realize it. You can carry greatness and not activate it. These people carry covenant. They also had God, but they never, never knew it. Just like many people go to church, but many people have not realized, discovered who they are as Christians. It's a, there's a difference between being a Christian. There's a difference where you understand who you are as a Christian. The Bible says, he said, John 1, 12, he said, to those who have received him, to them he gave power to be called the sons of God. We are sons. Romans 8, 14, the book of Romans 8, 14, said, for those who are led by the Spirit, are the sons of God. For those who are led, brethren, please, I'm begging you. I'm encouraging you. Please spend quality time with God. You see, we are living in a dangerous time. We are living, and you see, like I said at last night prayer, if we don't pay the price to know God, our children will suffer. I'm telling you the truth. Our marriages will suffer. If we don't pay the price to know God, because in our in knowing God is where we understand to discover who we truly are. Look at this. People go to school to become a nurse. What do you think that schooling does to them? It, it changes their mentality to make them discover who they were meant to be. That is what school, that's why when you see people go to school and the, their mindset is not changed. Something is wrong. Education, knowledge is supposed to transform our brain, transform our cognitive reasoning from who we used to be to who we are meant to be. Knowledge is supposed to change us from who we used to be to who we are meant to be positively. Please, I'm begging. Let's create time for God. Create quality time because you don't know, one, how would you discover your assignment without creating time for God? How would you discover the plan of God for your life for a season? Because God's plan is attached to seasons. I said that before, every plan of God, look at me now, I'm 38 of age. Next year, I'm going to be 39. By the time I'm 60, I'm 65, there are some things I won't be able to do again. I can go to the gym and lift a dumbbell of 60 pounds, dumbbell of this. By the time I clock 70, I can't do it again. There are some things God will not give to you to do when you get to a certain age because it is past your season. Every, just like a baby, a baby between the age of three months and seven months, the baby is expected to crawl. When the baby is not crawling by one year, the mother is troubled, the father is troubled. You will never see a baby of seven years old and you are giving that baby a bottle, a bottle to drink, a bottle to put, put milk in that bottle. No matter how hungry that baby is, that baby, a baby of five will not take that bottle from you. And all I'm telling you is age is attached to seasons. That is why we have winter, we have summer, we have fall, we have, we have different seasons. 
God too, he has plan. His plan are attached to seasons. Please discover what God has called you to do. Go for it. There will be challenges, but believe it. Pay the price. Be committed. Go for knowledge. Pray. Prayer, like they say, prayer is the key. Verse 47. And, and, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. And for the battle is the Lord. And he will give you into our hands. Verse 48. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and he came to drill nigh to meet David, that David escaped and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his back and took thence a stone and sprang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and it fell down his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistines with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Look at that. This man won a battle, <laughs> a huge battle without sword in his hand. Do you know, I've had someone said, one of my mentors said, the greatest, some of the greatest battle you will ever win in life is through knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge, not by argument, not by violence, but through knowledge. And that is why we must acquire knowledge of the word of God. Some of the points I have here says, as Christ, as Christians, we must understand that to fulfill destiny, it takes a fight of faith. We can never lay hold or obtain God's promises for our lives without a fight of faith. Like we saw in the life of David and Goliath. To become a winner in any race, you must fight. To become a winner in any race, any race, only a winner obtain the prize. Only a winner can obtain the prize. If you go for any quiz contest, you cannot obtain any prize until you become a winner. We must also understand that it takes a fight to triumph, to become victorious in life. Life is a fight. Brethren, friends, please, I'm saying this again. Life is a fight. Life, see, lazy people can never survive this life. A lazy Christian can never survive. Life will turn the life of that person upside down. A lazy Christian cannot survive. He cannot have a happy marriage. Because every marriage, every good marriage must have a vision. And if you have a vision for your marriage, you will always bump into your partner. You will bump heads once in a while. You will bump. But when you have God, when God is the priority, when God is the center, is at the center of that marriage, that marriage will overcome many challenges. And that is why it's very important to make sure that we keep God as our highest priority. God must be our major priority. Real faith is very persistent aggressive and never giving up. Please, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. No matter the course you are taking, you might have started taking quizzes now for the semester. Maybe you already took your first test, you didn't do well. Don't give up. Don't give up, believe God. Believe God, but do your best. Give your best. Every good thing that lasts doesn't come cheap. Everything that lasts long doesn't come cheap. Today, when was the last time you see, um, what do you call it? Maserati, that car being advertised on TV. 
When was the last time you see them advertise Bentley on TV? There are many things that are very expensive. And let's see, but every dream has a price. Life has its own price. Know the cost of everything in front of you. If you know the cost and you know what to do. You know, I said something yesterday at the video and I want to re-emphasize on it. In pursuing your dream, one of the greatest things you can do for yourself, go and do your research to know what is required of you. Go and know what you are supposed to do. If you know what to do, do it and don't stop doing it. I'm telling you, if you see a millionaire, someone who is successful, the moment they stop doing what makes them successful, they will begin to go down. You can't stop doing what takes you high, what takes you to the top. You will come down. You will come down. If you drive your car, you put a full gas in it. If that car stops, and you don't put gas in the car again, what's going to happen? The car stop moving. Another point I have here, a man, a woman of faith, we always see challenges as opportunity for growth, to learn, or to become a new person. There is a nature of God in us that needs to be steered up through faith. We have been called the children of God. But you see, for that nature of God in us to come alive, it has to be activated through faith. And faith come how? Through the word of God. Every faith that produces long-lasting results are always knowledge-based. Your faith cannot be strong if you don't know the word. Your faith cannot be strong if you are not a reader. Prayer strengthens our faith. But that faith must always be backed up with knowledge, understanding. Faith is stronger when it's backed up with understanding. Rugged faith is never discouraged, despite those who doesn't believe in you. It's never discouraged. David was trying to be discouraged by his own brother, but he was never discouraged. A faith that wants to produce results must be willing to go extra mile and do what others won't do. Don't, don't ever look at your life that, oh, because no one has walked this path, then it's going to be, it's undoable. No, because nobody has done it before in your family doesn't mean you can't do it. Because nobody has achieved before. I've met people that say, oh, I don't believe in marriage because the, the marriage of my parents didn't work. I came from a polygamous home. My dad had three wives. But still, I believe that with God, I will have a successful marriage. And God did it. But you see, to have a successful marriage is hard work. Because marriage is work. You have to keep working on each other. You keep working on each other. You must be ready to say, to say sorry, even, even for every little, oh, babe, I'm so sorry. Oh, babe, I, I, I really apologize. It wasn't intentional. Please, I will keep saying it. If you find it very, very, very hard to say sorry, please walk on it. It destroy marriage. This thing destroy marriages. If you find it hard to receive correction, it will be hard for you to have a successful marriage. There's something I always tell my wife when we're, when we're having a relationship back then. I would tell her, please, babe, if I'm doing anything wrong, please tell me. If I'm doing anything wrong, please tell me. If I'm doing anything, please correct me. Don't let the people outside see my weakness. You tell me first. That is what life is all about. Growth is about being vulnerable for growth. Being vulnerable, you know, to be corrected, to be helped. A faith that produces results is a faith that dares fire, willing to walk alone and do what has never been done before and see the end 
of the result even before the beginning. That is the story of Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego. Unfortunately, we won't be able to look at that scripture tonight, which we can find in the book of Daniel chapter 3. These guys, they dared fire in, in the, in right in front of fire. Brethren, what is that thing that is trying to tear you? It's trying to tear your, your heart apart. I want you to go for the word. Go for the word of God and hold on to that word. I said something yesterday at the prayer, in the youth prayer last night. Don't stop praying until you see results. Many people have stopped praying and given up on God. And people concluded and say, God does not answer prayer. God answers prayer. But you must understand that for your prayer to get results, there, there are prayers that you have to pray for certain period of time to get results. Just like a baby must be in the womb for nine months for that baby to come out. There are some prayer, if you want results, you must continue. I've had, I have some mentors in, 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 you know, who are pastors that they prayed for almost 287 days. 287 days for them to get results. And these are people that have a congregation of over 100,000. I know a mentor that he left his church and went to South Korea to seek the face of God for three months, 90 days. And as at that time, the church was already over 20,000. Brethren, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is there are some prayer, there are some requests you ask God. It's, it has to take a long prayer to get results. Just like if you look at medical students, they have to study for long hours to become a, an effective medical student. You cannot, you, cannot, you cannot study for one hour daily or half an hour and you want to become a doctor. It's not done. It's not done. I'm telling you, what you are asking God will determine the, the kind of price you, are, you have to pay for it. So tonight, I want us to pray that God, help me, oh God. Strengthen my faith, oh God. Lord, strengthen my faith, oh God. I want us to pray that prayer from the depth of your heart that, oh God, strengthen my faith. Father, strengthen my faith. Prayer, my God and my Lord. That is strengthen my faith, oh God. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray for mercy, the Lord, for forgiveness. Every sin that is preventing my faith from growing, every wrong habit in my life, Father, remove them by your blood. Father, have mercy upon me. Forgive me of every sin, every sin of loss of this world, lost of the flesh, lost in my heart, every sin of disobedience, every sin of anger, every sin of backbiting, every sin of gossip. Lord, cleanse me with your blood. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Father, we come before you. That they cleanse me with your blood. That they cleanse me with your blood. That they cleanse me with your blood. From every sin of disobedience. From every sin of omission. From every sin, oh God. Every sin of omission. Every sin of disobedience. Every sin of disobedience. Lord, have mercy, O oh God. 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 Lord, have mercy, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray that, O oh God, lay your hand upon me afresh tonight. Daddy, lay your hand upon me afresh tonight to sustain this salvation. To sustain my faith, oh God. Daddy, lay your hand upon me afresh tonight. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My God and my maker. Daddy, lay your hand upon me afresh tonight. 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 Lay your hand upon... 
upon me afresh tonight. Lay your hand 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 upon me afresh tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray that, oh God, increase my faith, oh God. Lord, increase my faith, O God. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my Father, that they increase my faith. Lord, 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 increase my faith. Increase my faith, Lord Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. If anyone has any prayer requests, please begin to prepare it. Before we begin to take prayer requests, if you have a prayer request, something you want us to pray about, please begin to think about it. I want us to pray that God, help me to help myself. There are some of us that we are the enemy of ourselves. We are the one hindering ourselves from growing. That Lord, help me to help myself. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me to help myself. Help me to say no to wrong habits. Help me to say no to wrong friends. Help me to say no to wrong things, oh God. Lord, help me to help myself. Lord, help me to help myself. Lord, help me, oh God. Lord, help me, Lord Jesus. Help me to help myself. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Does anyone have any prayer request? I don't have a prayer request, but can I make a contribution? If you go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so um, really quickly, um, earlier when you were talking, you talked about um, like how our, our faith should produce fruit or something along those lines. And what popped in my spirit was a verse that I was, um, uh, I have it open, Psalm one verse three, where it yeah. says. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all that they do. Um, so basically from this, we can see like, obviously the riverbank represents God, the word of God. And we can be that tree that is unshakable if we plant ourselves in that riverbank. And what I got from that too, because we talked about faith, depending, you can have faith in other things. But if you have faith in the word of God, that is where your true strength comes from. So if God is the living water, the water that never runs dry, according to this chapter, if we are planted by that riverbank, we should be bearing fruit each season. So if you're in a place where you feel like you are not bearing fruit, that is for you to now go and reflect and be like, where are my roots planted? Because it's not in God, because the word of God tells us if we are planted by God, that source, the water, the living water, we should every season bear fruit. So if you're not, it's a moment for you to go into reflection, ask God, okay, where, where am I planted that is not of you? So I just wanted to contribute that really quickly. Wow, wow, awesome, awesome. Thank you very much, Sister, Sister Oi. I know the person in the contribution, and if you have a prayer you want us to pray, please, you can chip it in before we round up. You know, um, I want us to pray, like I always say, that God, let there be revival in New Jersey. Lord, let there be revival in this nation. Father, don't let the enemy take over this generation. Don't let the devil take over the next generation. Lord, let there be revival in this generation. Lord, let there be let the fire of revival follow oh God. Let there be revival in our time. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. 
Daddy will make a demand tonight. Father, let there be revival in this nation. Let there be revival in this nation. Let there be revival in this nation. Revive our soul, O oh God. Let there be revival in this nation. 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 Let there be revival in New Jersey. Let there be revival in Washington, D.C. Let there be revival in New York, oh God. Let there be revival in Texas. Let there be revival in Atlanta. Let there be revival in Baltimore. Let there be revival in Chicago. Let there be revival in every state in this nation. Let there be revival. We make a demand for 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 revival. Let there be 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 revival. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray that, oh God, Daddy, raise men and women for this gospel among young people. Daddy, raise young men and young women in every angle, in the north, in the south, in the east, and the west, for this gospel, so that our generation will not perish. Lord, raise young people, O God. Lord, raise young people, O God, in holiness and righteousness. Prayer in the name of Jesus. That is raise young people, O God, in holiness and righteousness. In holiness and righteousness. In holiness and righteousness. In holiness and righteousness, that you raise young people, Father, raise young people in this nation, in the north, from the south, from the east, from the west of this nation, that you raise young people, Father, raise young people. 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 Jesus, raise young people. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray. Isaiah 7, verse 7 says, God see the Lord. It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass, that every satanic devices to destroy the lives of young people in this generation, in this season, be terminated. Every conspiracy of darkness to destroy the souls of young people, to destroy marriages, be, let the plan of the enemy be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my maker, every devices of the enemy to, de to destroy the souls of young people, to destroy Christian marriages. Daddy, let that plan be destroyed. 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 Every powers of darkness, destroying marriages, destroying the souls of young people. Daddy, we stop them. We stop them. We stop them by the blood, by the blood, by the blood, by the blood, by the blood of Jesus. We stop them. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray against every spirit of drug addiction, every spirit of depression, every spirit of masturbation, every spirit of pornography, every spirit of lesbianism and, 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 and homosexuality that is creeping into the church of God, that, oh God, our children shall not become wayward. This, this, this spirit will not destroy the next generation. That, oh God, imagine if this thing has started even from Genesis, and we are still waging war till now, that, oh God, rescue our generation. 
Rescue our young people. Rescue the young people, oh God, from every spirit of drug addiction, from every spirit of fornication, from every spirit of alcoholism. Oh, prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my maker, that you rescue our young people, that you rescue our young people from every spirit of drug addiction. Rescue every marriages from every adultery, from every masturbation. Rescue every young person from every worldliness, from every pornography, from masturbation, oh God, from, from every form of habit, from every form of habit, from every form of habit, that you rescue young people, rescue marriages, rescue young people, rescue Christian marriages, rescue young people, rescue Christian marriages, rescue young people, that you will rescue them by the blood of Jesus, 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 by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to quickly pray that every Christian, every young person, every marriage that is going down, every Christian that has backslidden, that has gone back, God restore them. Lord, restore them. Lord, restore them. Restore every broken marriage. Restore every broken heart. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My God and my Father will make a demand tonight that they restore every broken soul, that they restore every lost soul, that they restore every broken marriage, 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 restore every broken soul, restore every broken soul, restore every broken marriage, restore every broken life, restore every broken life. Restore every lost souls. Restore every lost souls. Restore every lost souls. Restore every lost souls. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray for the youth of our church. I want you to also pray for your siblings that, oh God, help me to follow you wholeheartedly. Help me to follow you in spirit and in truth. Lord, help me, O oh God, to follow you with all of my heart. Help me, O oh God, Daddy, I have no strength of my own. Help me, O oh God, don't let me lose you. Don't let me lose you. There are many things that are trying to catch my attention. Lord, help me, O oh God. Lord, help me. Lord, help me not to lose this salvation. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Lord, help my wife, O oh God. Lord, help my children, O oh God, not to lose this salvation. Help Faith and Josiah. Help my wife, Lord Jesus. Help my wife, Lord Jesus. Help me, O oh God. Help my generation, O oh God. Help our youth, O oh God. Help our youth, O oh God. Help our youth, O oh God. That they revive our youth, O oh God. Help our youth, O oh God. Help our parents, O oh God. That they not to lose you. Not to lose you. Not to lose you. Not to lose you. That they help us, O oh God to follow you with all of our heart, to follow with all of our heart, to follow, oh God, to follow, oh God, in spirit and in truth, to follow, oh God, in spirit and in truth, to follow, oh God, in Jesus' name we pray. Before we round up, any prayer requests once again? All right. And this is going to be our last prayer. That everyone who is in school right now god i want us to pray for them that the spirit of let the spirit of excellence the spirit of wisdom spirit of understanding be released upon them they will not fail this semester they will not fail everyone who is in school this semester god will make a demand prayer pray for them that let the spirit of excellence the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding be released upon every student be released upon every student with decree excellent spirit with decree excellent spirit with decree favor with decree they shall not fail 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 with decree no student shall fail this semester with decree they shall not fail in jesus name we pray heavenly father i will say thank you thank you for your mercy Thank you for your grace. But as you are putting it in my heart, I make a demand for someone who is here tonight. There's someone you are trusting God for a favor. 
that day I decree, let that favor be released to this person in the name of Jesus. I don't know what you are expecting God for, but I decree before this month is over, before October 15, I decree, let that favor be released. Let your expectation 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 be released. For, a, for another person that needs a change of job, I make a demand in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree a change of job. I decree, let a job you didn't apply for, let that job be released to you. Let that job locate you. Let that job locate you. I decree divine direction. I decree direction for those who are trusting God for direction. I decree direction for those who are looking up to God for encounter. I decree divine encounter for those who are trusting God for financial favor. I decree this month, receive financial favor. 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 I decree fresh hunger. Fresh hunger for God. Fresh test for God. Fresh hunger. The grace to spend time with God. The grace to study the word. The grace to pray. I make a demand tonight. Let the grace to pray be released upon us tonight. Be released upon us tonight. Be released upon us tonight. I make some is saying, I need the grace to be consistent. The grace to be persistent. I decree tonight, let the grace for consistency, the grace for persistence be released upon you, be released upon you, be released upon you. I make a demand over that family. Nothing evil shall be for your family. I decree your parents are covered by the blood of Jesus. Your siblings are covered by the blood of Jesus. No evil shall be for you. Whosoever will sick here tonight, or you have a family member who is sick, we decree they are healed. We decree they are healed. We decree they are healed. We decree they are healed in the name of Jesus. Father, let your name alone be exalted, O oh God. Thank you for what you have done. I decree that September we end with breakthrough for you. September we end with favor for you. September you are protected. September you are preserved. I decree you will be in the right place at the right time. I decree your heart will not wake from God. Your heart will not be diverted from God. Your heart will not be distracted from God. That the let your name alone be exalted, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. I want to say thank you very much to everyone again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May the Lord continue to strengthen you. Thank you so much. I pray that every one of us, we won't serve God in vain. That we will make it at the end. We will make it at the end. And for anyone, whatsoever may might be going through in school, as a person, please don't give up on God. Talk to God. Even while you are in the bathroom, you are anywhere, talk to God, help me. Help me. And the Lord will come true for you in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful night. Please go to church tomorrow with a great expectation. Trust God to do something tangible for you. Trust God. Go to his presence with a great expectation. Someone, I'm, I'm, Holy Spirit is telling me to tell someone, please avoid anyone trigger you. Someone might try to trigger you either tonight or in the morning. Be very careful. Be very careful because the person wants you to lose your blessing. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. In Jesus' name. You're welcome, Zena. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Deborah, for joining. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Daniel. The Lord help every one of us in Jesus. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you, Sister Latosin, everyone. Thank you, my wife. Thank you so much.